Hey y'all, I've got an anime channel called Mystic Sage, where I do anime top 10s, speculations, and more. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch to keep up to date with me, the channel, and even for some entertainment. Links will be in the description below. Thanks guys, enjoy the video. So a while back, I went and ranked all of the gym leaders from red and blue from easiest to hardest. And you guys seem to really be into that. So I figured I would revisit the concept today and tackle the gym leaders from Johto. Usually with gym leaders, there is this idea that they get progressively more difficult as you move through your gym challenge. But that really is not always the case. I'm taking a few things into consideration when I rank these leaders, such as the Pokemon you'll be up against versus the selection of Pokemon you will have available to you at that point in the game, as well as the moves available to you versus the moves on their Pokemon. Even if a gym leader has Pokemon over level 40, that doesn't exactly mean they're harder to beat than an early game gym leader with a level 14 that might just be pretty difficult for the part of the game. Let's waste no more time and figure out who just is the most difficult in all the land west of Kanto. We're going to start things off, obviously, with the easiest gym leader in my opinion, and that is Chuck from Seenwood City. You really might not think of Chuck possibly being an easier gym leader than Falconer. This is actually a perfect example of what I spoke about in the intro. For example, since he is the fifth gym leader. However, you really need to take into account here that he only has two Pokemon on his team, on his Gold, Silver, and Crystal team. The fighting type usually isn't one you should just sleep on, as many fighting Pokemon will make you pay for that. But back in Gen 2, it was incredibly easy to deal with. Chuck has a level 27 Primeape and a level 30 Polyrath, and they don't exactly have the most diverse movesets. Primeape is loaded with a pretty decent stab move in Karate Chop, though that itself is still going to only be at 75 base power thanks to the boost. The rest of its moveset is just normal type moves, and that is incredibly non-threatening. As for Polyrath, it can definitely be a little annoying with a hypnosis move, and it actually has a move beyond its fighting type that can deal more damage than most normal type moves in Surf. However, Dynamic Punch is its only fighting move, and that's just not something you realistically need to worry about because of the 50% accuracy. At this point in the game, relying on just your starter isn't necessary, though if you happen to pick Chikorita, you'll probably be able to handle this battle pretty well. If you aren't overleveled, you'll be using Bayleaf at the time of this battle, and with its 80 base defense and resistance to the water type, you should just be able to tank through this battle with a couple Razor Leafs. However, if you want Cyndaquil or Totodile, things won't be as easy for you, but still not all that complicated. All you need to do is get your hands on Abra or Mount 34, and you'll definitely be with the Kadabra by the time you challenge the gym. Quite frankly, you'll probably be able to one-shot both Primeape and Polyrath with Psybeam, which Kadabra will learn at level 21. And if not, they don't exactly have any moves that are going to be punishing Kadabra and its nice special stats. Chuck just is not a challenge in any conceivable way. As for that point in the game, there are way too many checks for the fighting type. So after Chuck, the next easiest gym leader that would at least give you a little bit more trouble is Morty. Honestly, Morty would probably be as easy as Chuck if not for the fact that his team makes use of its typing a little better. Morty uses a level 21 Ghastly, two Haunter at levels 21 and 23, and a Gengar at level 25. Considering the fact that you can't get Mistrevious until the post game at Mount Silver, it makes sense that his whole team would just be the Gengar line since they're the only real ghost types in the second gen. Mostly falls into the same trap as Chuck in that it can easily be handled without prejudice by Kadabra, since the the entire Gengar line has the poison type alongside the ghost typing, they're not going to be taking second type moves all that well. Kadabra is incredibly fast, so that speeding Ghastly and the two Haunter and one shine them with the Psybeam won't be too difficult. But Gengar matches speed with Kadabra and even has a higher special attack stat. This is also not Gen 1, so the ghost type actually is super effective against psychic types, making this battle a little more difficult than Chuck since Morty is actually equipped to try and fight back against Kadabra. Regardless of that though, this is still going to be incredibly easy, and that's if you don't even go in over leveled. Morty and Chuck are the 4th and 5th gyms in Johto, so I guess that just goes to show that once you reach the halfway point in the game, you're able to throw things on cruise control for a little bit. So now it's time to finally talk about the first gym leader that you go to battle with in the Johto region. The third easiest gym leader is Falconer, and this is honestly an honor for any leadoff leader in the region. Falconer uses the flying type, and he isn't as much of a pushover as you might think, regardless of being the first challenge on your way to the Indigo Plateau. Falconer's team is just a level 7 Pidgey and a level 9 Pidgeotto, though each carry a unique way to mess with two of the three starting options for the game. Leading up to you taking on Falconer, you've got a couple of options for Pokemon to add to your team. You could get your hands on some miscellaneous Pokemon and brute force your way through Falconer, though that is just throwing a full team at him and would be a lot more work than you would normally think was needed for a beginning gym leader. You could, however, head up to Route 46 and scoop yourself up a Geodude and get to level 11, though that would result in doing something a little overwhelming. Plus, as I mentioned, these Pokemon have some interesting moves. Both Pidgey and Pidgeotto have Mud Slap, and they would definitely outspeed a Geodude, so it's very possible that Falconer will still be able to take one out. This also makes it difficult for Cynical to go up against the duo of birds, as it'll definitely hate to take a ground-type move. The case for Chikorita is definitely no good here either, as it'll 
will get absolutely wrecked by Gus from Pidgeotto, if it actually manages to get through Pidgey. That will leave you with Totodile, and if you combine the efforts of it with the Geodude, you should be able to find the right combination of moves to take out Falconer without too many problems. However, for the part of the game to only be able to have a somewhat easy time with one of the three starters, it's definitely a challenge. As it would be, the fourth easiest gym leader is actually the one that comes right after Falconer, the walking bug Pokemon encyclopedia, Bugsy. Bugsy's actually got a pretty simple team at first glance, but that ace of his is absolutely difficult to deal with. His first two Pokemon are a pair of level 14 Metapod and Kakuna, but the true challenge here is at level 16 Scyther. It packs major power with the base 110 attack and 105 speed, something you probably wouldn't normally think you'd need to worry about in just the second gym of the region. However, if you're not prepared for a battle like this, you'll find yourself without any option but to get overleveled. Now this battle can actually be easily handled with a rock type Pokemon, so getting your hands on a Geodude like we mentioned earlier would be a great idea. With Geodude, you should be able to get through the entirety of this battle, though if you for some reason don't have one, this battle can be tricky. With a Kalava at your disposal, you should be able to take on this team without too much of a problem, though that quick attack from Scyther can still hurt an awful lot. Using Bayleaf won't go over too well either, since a Fury Cutter will definitely have a chance to take it out with only two hits. That would leave us with Croconna, which is definitely the neutral option of the three, though if it isn't hitting that Scyther quickly and hard, it'll probably also be taken out of just a few Fury Cutters. The main reason I consider this battle with Bugsy to be more difficult than the previous three is due to the absolute state of that Scyther. Just because it can evolve in the second generation doesn't mean that on its own it isn't a formidable Pokemon. Much like in the first generation where a grass type will help you get through the first two gems of these, a rock type will help you greatly here too. These first four leaders are definitely the easiest in the second gen, but the next four are a bit more challenging. Starting off the second half of this list is the 7th gym leader in Johto, Price. Price has got himself a team of ice types, and while you can probably assume that a fire type will easily take him out, it's not exactly as easy as that. Price's team is a level 27 Seal, a level 29 Dugong, and a level 31 Pilosmine. As usual, I'm not going to really be looking into this battle as if you have Pokemon over level 31, so you're gonna still be using Kalava and Bayleaf or Feraligatr as your starter once you get to this battle. Kalava is going to offer a decent change against this team, as Seal and Dugong do not have water type moves, and Pilosmine Pulsewine doesn't have a ground type move. You'll be able to go up against all three with Kalava and probably manage to sweep Price depending on a few different factors. The fire typing will be able to do neutral damage to Seal and Dugong while also being super effective against Pulsewine. That being said, it is still possible that these Pokemon could take a few fire type moves and slap back against Kalava. Dugong and Seal both have headbutt, it can cause Kalava to flinch as it could very well outspeed it. And Pulsewine has a good amount of bulk and could come out swinging with a 100 base attack stat and a fury attack move just waiting to do some damage. If you're going into the battle with Bayleaf, you're absolutely going to be defeated by the many ice type moves that Price employs, and honestly calling upon anything that's weak to the ice typing will result in you having a bad time. A great Pokemon to turn to at this point would definitely be Slugma, but unfortunately it and its evolved form at Cargo aren't actually obtainable until you get to the Cycling Road in Kanto, so it's not really an option. The other good option from Gen 2 when it comes to fire types is Houndour, and you're not going to find that until Kanto either. You can get your hands on Growlithe in Gold and Vulpix in Silver rather early, and of course there's always the option of turning the Machoke into this battle. However, this battle is only really at it's easiest when you have a fire type, and the options of getting one by this point in the game that will actually help you are very slim. This is a challenging battle without a fire type, and definitely deserving of being in the top half of the list. It is appropriate that the third most difficult gym leader in the Johto region would be someone who uses a still type, don't you agree? Jasmine's team is actually pretty difficult to deal with, for all three of the starter Pokemon in the game. It's a little odd as Price is considered to be the seventh gym leader, but you can battle him before Jasmine and his team is actually quite a bit weaker. For the sake of this conversation, we're going to treat Jasmine as the badge you go to after once you beat Price, and that means you all Pokemon up to level 35, as that is the cutoff before you get over level. Jasmine's typing is the brand new still type, and she has a couple of level 30 Magnemite and a level 35 Steelix. Like I said before, this is actually a pretty difficult battle regardless of starter. If you remain at a level cap of 35, you won't have Typhlosion yet, but you'd have Feraligatr and Meganium. Typhlosion is obviously the kind of Pokemon you'd want going into this battle, and as I'm sure you remember from just us talking about price, your options for fire types are a little limited up to this point with Growlithe and Gold and Vulpix and Silver. This would of course leave you to get your hands on a ground type or fighting type, which you can do. Graveler is an option to bring into battle against Jasmine, though it will not take an Iron Tail from Steelix too well. And you to hit it back fast isn't going to work too well due to a poor speed stat and Steelix's sky-high defense. 
A fighting type like Mankey that you can evolve into Prime Imp and get on Route 42 is something that can very easily be turned to, though it will also not enjoy taking damage from the Pokemon Jasmine has. A greatly special attacking fire type is your best bet to do battle with her, but with just a Kalava, you'll really need to worry about Rock Fur from Steelix. Those Magnemite can easily do some heavy damage to Feraligatr if you don't prepare for them well, and Meganium will hardly be able to touch any Steel types with its Grass type moves. They don't equip you too terribly well at this point to handle Jasmine, but really as long as you can combine the efforts of your Kalava and a Graveler, you should be able to get to her without too huge of a problem. That's truthfully the only somewhat easy way to go about it safely, though since she is very prepared for the water type with her Magnemite. It's now that time. Who is in the penultimate spot on this list and is the second hardest gym leader in the entire region of Johto? Well, you guys might give me flack for this one, but I've got to say it's Whitney and that scary Miltang. I really don't even need to talk much about her Clefairy, as that it isn't what she is known for. However, it is level 18 and that metronome encore combo has the potential to be incredibly annoying to deal with. By the time you're battling with Whitney, you've got a couple of Pokemon probably, and you've definitely evolved your starter. Unfortunately, you've got just one option against Whitney, and that is a trade for the mod shop named Muscle in the Goldenrod department store. It's going to cost you a drowsy, but once you get Muscle, the Machop, it should have Cryochop and thus come in handy against the normal type gym. Well, it should be coming in handy. But with how annoying Miltank is with its set of Stomp, Milk Drink, Attract, and Rollout, it may not even matter. Even if Machop is able to resist Rollout, it is still an incredibly strong move and it could easily be made to fall in love with Miltank and can be completely unable to attack. This can be incredibly annoying without becoming overleveled, but it is possible to overcome this issue using items and other methods. Finally, it's time to reveal who the hardest gym leader in Johto is, and this one is sure to be a controversial opinion to put over Whitney. By process of elimination, you've probably figured out that I've put Claire here, and I truly believe she's the most difficult gym leader in the region. And I'm sure that you guys are probably preparing to tell me how easy it is to defeat them if you just bring an ice type like Jinx, which you can actually get just before arriving in Blackthorn in the ice path. Even if you do happen to get through the Dragonair, you still need to put up with a very difficult Kindra. Kindra is loaded with two pretty good stab moves in Surf and Dragon Breath, and it has has a powerful 95 special attack stat. The only other typing that is going to be super effective against it is Dragon, and good luck getting one, as your only chance is to get a good or super ride on Route 45 for a low probability of rolling in a Dratini or Dragonair of your own. If you do though, the only Dragon type move you'll have prior to Kindra level 40 is Twister, unless you count Dragon Rage. That obviously isn't good enough, and from there on, you need to find the correct group of Pokemon that allow you to both survive Kindra's powerful stab attacks, but also its last ditch move, Hyper Beam. Each of Claire's three Dragonair have a move that is super effective to the start options, those being Thunderbolt, Surf, and Ice Beam. This battle is practically made to be difficult, and that's incredibly fitting considering this is the final battle sending between you and the right to challenge it Indigo Plateau. Well, there you guys have it. That's what I believe are the easiest to hardest gym winners in Johto. All in all, this is a rather easy region to get through. If your team consists of your starter alongside a Machamp, Golem, and Alakazam, or even just the stage one evolutions of those lines, you're going to be in pretty good shape to get through the most of the game. I want to know what you guys think though, so let me know in the comments below what your gym leader hardness rankings are. If you agree with me, great, and if not, I'd love to hear what you think. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me even further, consider following my Twitter where I stream a lot of Pokemon content and Nintendo content like Shiny Hunting, Shodown Battles, Pokemon Nuzlocks, Zelda, Fire Emblem, and much more. I've also been reviewing every episode of My Hero Academia Season 4 over on Mystic Sage, so head over there if you're into that too. Want to support me further further and gain cool perks? Check out my Patreon. Daniel Leone, Lady Crimson, Memory Martin, The Lazy Leo, Matthew Young, Awesome Lego, Jarrett Wiz Austin, Sudden Grider, Nigma97, and DDD did, and I want to thank them personally for going above and beyond. It means the world to me. I think I'm wrap this up though. I'm Mystic Umbreon and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.